Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Shaboy. It's Uncle Rankin. It's Lobster Pappy. It's Big Willie. It's, uh, it's the Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen of drum and bass. It's the Charlie Bronson of dubstep. It's, uh, it's your boy. It's me. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. It's going to be absolutely fine. Just give me, give me an hour of your life. Give me the next hour of your life. And in exchange for that, I'll give you some shoe throwers. Oof. Give you some flip-flop flingers. I'll give you some Yeezy yeeters. And I'll feed some bollocks from the internet directly into your mind. I'll feed the most turgid atrocities committed by journalists directly into your face. Like... Like a pingered up dude just dribbling on your shoulder, telling you he loves you, and you still having not come up yet, cursing the dealer who you think sold you duds, just going, Oh, yeah, oh, t- thanks. Oh, cheers. Yeah, no, all right. Yeah, no, 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 I love you too. Yeah, that's nice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Coffee and memes. Oh no, wrong one. <laughs> Steady job, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you. And if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> ah! still dying, still dying, but not yet dead. Welcome to Coffee and Memes. Welcome to Threshold.fm. Welcome to YouTube and Facebook and all of those decent, honest, God-fearing platforms. Facebook and YouTube aren't decent, honest, God-fearing platforms. No one the Zucks about. No one the Zucks around trying to take down videos and throttle your your reach because he's out for cash to spend on new legs or whatever he spends his money on. New reptilian legs, new bloody high strength. Lizard claws to I don't I don't know better dissect the infants that he whose organs he harvests and squeezes the blood into his reptilian mouth. I presume I don't know. I've 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 never looked you know that deeply into uh, Zuckerberg's per- personal life, but I can I can just assume I can only assume that he drinks the blood of infants. Uh, you know I I can't confirm that that's a fact. Uh, I I haven't checked up on Snopes to see whether or not that can be fact-checked. I'm just saying it's possible. Look, we've got some good bits today. Uh, sorry, a slightly false start on Threshold. The um, As usual, when I try to do something fancy and clever, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work. So um, came in a little bit late on the intro th- there, but it's fine. As far as I can tell, no one died. Uh, so that seems reasonable. Um, good bits today. It got this... Um, Oh, going to play this new tech itch bit. Oh, it's nice. It's got amens in it. Uh, new Delta Heavy. Sounds quite pendulum-y, so that's nice. Um, oh, no. He's well there, Tiger. Um, don't want the new tech itch bit just yet. Soon, though, soon. Uh, abstract with a f- spell with a four. That was yesterday. We might play that again. It's a nice bit. Uh, jolly fee. Jol... J- uh, jolly fur, jolly fur, jol Robbie T. Got this Robbie T bit. Play that. Fine. Uh, what have we got in terms of bollocks? Uh, teacher's tongue eaten away after downing six energy drinks a day. Uh, yeah, that'll do it to you, brother. That'll do it to you. Uh, woman gives birth to twins with different dads after cheating on the husband. That's a bit of fun. Don't get them mixed up. Uh, I'm probably worth tattooing the foot of one of them just to make sure because all babies look the same. Uh, police called after man spends hours in shop loo uh, saying that he's having a shit. Uh, that's news, according to the Metro. 
Uh, synthetic booze to get you drunk without hangovers, ready in five years. Uh, buy one now. Literally right now. If, if someone could come in here with that, some of that hangover-free synthetic booze, I'll have a Jaeger bomb. I'll have two Jaeger bombs, actually, and a pint of mild. Half a mild. Government stutters over porn ban for UK computers and phones. So this was expected to come in on Monday. Uh, but however it seems, it might not. Or might be a little bit later. I mean, what is this, Brexit? Like, seriously? How, like... I, I really think that, like, faith in the government has got to be at an all-time low. I mean... <coughs> Is there anyone that could reasonably say they have faith in the UK government at the moment, no matter what party you vote for? Like, seriously, I have to go, no, I think they're actually doing a pretty good job. You know, difficult circumstances and everything. I really think that they're, they're, not, they're doing their best and it really shows. You, I know they're doing a fantastic job. They're absolutely serving the British people as the British people want to be served. I mean, but like, seriously, you can't even get together putting an age restriction on porn sites. That's got to be pretty simple, hasn't it? It's always one fucking splash page that you demand all the big companies do. All the big companies do it because they don't want to get fined. And you don't go around cleaning up the little ones because you're too fucking lazy. I think that's how it works. Jesus Christ. Anyway, we'll get into that. Uh, woman arrested after twerking on cop. Uh, she says, arrest me with your cock. Uh, surprisingly, police were not down with it. Thank you, donkey. Uh, these Scottish insults have officially been added to the dictionary. That sounds like fun. Uh, keen to find out uh, those if uh, if uh, Stin and Chode are um, are keen Scottish members of the Lobster Crew. Uh, feel free to weigh in on these, particularly for pronunciation and as to whether or not uh, I've got the accent correct because I almost certainly weren't. Uh, it's almost certainly weren't. Um, bam, bam pot, bam stick, ball bag. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, we, uh, uh, Ouija. Also now officially a word is Ouija. W-E-E-G-I-E. -E. Is that someone from Glasgow? Okay. Dirty bar. Right, well that's not, is that, I mean, they probably say that in America. Anyway, look, we'll get into that. No, not interested in this. That's bollocks. Doctors offer hygiene tips as one in five office mugs found to contain poo. Um, I don't know whose office that's in, but I've, yeah, I mean, what are the hygiene tits? Wash your mugs? Yo, tell me with this! Oh, God. Uh, anyway, look, eight minutes in, and let's do this tech itch bit, because I know that's the only reason anyone's here. I understand, you know, I'm not triggered by it. I, you know, I've, I've made my bed. I understand the limitations of the bed. It's, it's not quite long enough. I'm a tall guy, but, you know, I'll lie in it. Okay, good. Doctor says I've got to go for a CT scan. Probably be fine.
just going off camera to die a little bit. A, uh, this is a spicy little number. It's got a herd of ragy elephants in there, just casually. <laughs> Tech itch, it's called Reap the Future. Ooh, wee. That's a naughty bit. Nice one, Tech itch. Cheers for that. Cheers for fucking cracking on, making some ridiculous dark side, nasty, choppy shoe throwers, just like you used to back in the day. Yeah, cheers, mate. Keep 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 at it. Might as well. I mean, Christ, have you got anything better to do? I, I doubt it. Um Teacher's tongue eating away after downing six energy drinks a day. Jesus, look at the state of that. They're probably worse for you than dingers. Probably are, actually. Uh, blistered and peeling away, this teacher says the damage done to his tongue is a result of his consumption of energy drinks. Well, he's a twat, doesn't he? Dan Royals drinks at least six a day, and he puts the damage done inside his mouth down to his addiction. He is now warning people about the dangers of the drinks, which contain uh, up to 13 teaspoons of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. You can drink six, six of them a day. At least six a day. You're ridiculous. It's not just the sugar as well. There's all manner of other bollocks in there. You might as well just knock it up in a bloody chemistry, one of those like kids chemistry kits that you, you know, the sort of thing you might have got for Christmas and been thoroughly disappointed with as a child. Get one of those where you, I don't know, you make sodium hydroxide and throw it at the wall. Um, when I was at school in science class, I think this was about year nine, uh, we were making sodium hydroxide. You might remember it was blue. And the teacher was demonstrating it. And then his safety talk about not getting it in your mouth was this. You have to be very careful with sodium hydroxide because if you get it in your mouth, you, oh, oh dear, 
and left the room. Like literally just took it and put it in his mouth as a demonstration of what not to do and then realised what he'd done. You bellend. God bless you though. I did get my double C in science. So, you know, it was teachers like him that got me through. Anyway, Dan revealed that his doctor told him excessive sugar and various chemicals found in the energy drinks were likely to blame for his flesh being eaten away. Sure you haven't been imbibing crocodile on the side as well. He wrote on Facebook, Who drinks energy drinks? Addicted to them? You may want to think again. I wonder, um, I think if you drank uh, probably six pints a day, probably quite a lot of people drink six pints a day for many, many years. I mean, it gets catches up with them in the end, but it doesn't rot the flesh on the inside of their mouth, just the internal organs. Um, have a look at the second pick. Have a look at the second pick. Uh, that's what the shit does to your tongue. Imagine what it's like on your internals. Dude, that is grim. Uh, up until recently, when this started to occur, I was drinking at least five to six a day. Lack of e energy, teaching kids usually. No, it's probably due to the enormous amount of sugar that you're taking in, actually slowing you down. It's probably having a de like they're having detrimental effect, effect at that level. Uh and I brushed daily, went to the doctor, and boom, found out that the chemicals in these drinks were causing it. It's literally, it will literally eat away at your tongue. So be wary, guys. Dan also smokes, but firmly believes the tongue damage is a result of the drinks. Okay, mate. Okie dokie. He added, just to make it clear, I do actually do more for my oral health, but this is purely from the drinks. I do smoke, but it has nothing to do with eating away at your tongue. World Health Organization researchers said, a study in the US showed that dental cavities can result from the acidic pH and High sugar content of products such as energy drinks. Yeah, no shit. Another study showed that consumption of energy drinks can cause erosion and smear layer removal. Smear layer? Smear layer removal in the teeth, leading to cervical dental hypersensitivity. Uh, what happens when you drink energy drinks regularly? Vessels become less flexible. Vessels? Vessels become less flexible as the cells that line them respond to food and drink. Uh, deprived fats and sugar, oh, derived fats and sugar circulating in the blood. This makes them more success, uh, susceptible to the buildup of cholesterol that can lead to heart disease. Uh, yeah, as it turns, well, as some people um, uh, believe now that the um, buildup of cholesterol in your veins is actually due to excessive uh, sugar and refined carbohydrates consumption rather than the actual consumption of dietary cholesterol as was previously thought. Uh, that actually now turns out uh, not to be the case. Um, I can't say that definitively. Nothing is definitive in science, but that is certainly the belief nowadays by a large swathe of the nutritional science population. He's gone down in nutritional science. Bloody uh, thing again. I was doing it yesterday on Discord, ranting on about saturated fat and it not being bad in and of itself. Oh, dear. This is why I need a... Um, I do need someone... Maybe I should have Squiffington here every day just to, just to lean over and just, go, just give me a gentle slap. You're doing it again. All right, sorry, sorry. Um... Short-term changes are normally and usually uh, are normal. Short-term changes are normal and usually last for several hours. Um, but we, it, but if we repeatedly have unhealthy foods or drinks, it can lead to cardiovascular disease. FMD is an ultrasound measurement. Okay, why have you stuck that? The researchers believe. Ca what? This is laid out in a weird way. The researchers believe caffeine, taurine, sugar, and herbal ingredients in energy drinks are bad for the uh, endo endothelium the lining of the blood vessels i can imagine they're bad for everything really i mean there's they can't be they're pretty much devoid of any actual nutrition i mean sure they're delicious especially when you put booze in them but guys come on everything in <laughs> everything in moderation including moderation and mark twain uh, who comes out with all who came out with all of these quotes well off a smug twat mark twain i mean sure i you know he's done some good work you know, he's a lot of clever wit witticisms and uh, all that sort of thing. Bit smug, though, you'd have thought. You know, it's like, mm, the coldest winter I ever endured was summer in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Shut up, Mark. God's sake, can't you just not be a prick for five minutes? He needed a, 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 an overbearing wife to just bully that out of him. The, 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 you know, there, there are benefits to an overbearing wife sometimes. Like, uh, oh, who was it the other day? Oh, that, that dude drinking his own piss. 
like basically living off his own like fermented piss like an overbearing wife would not stand for that that would be bullied out of you immediately and to your benefit so you know just saying that you know uh, domineering but um <coughs> oh uh, something i was alerted to yesterday male feminist news um a uh, a new type of fuck boy soft boy is on the loose on tinder and they have in their profile uh, looking for FLR, which stands for female-led relationship. Um, advice from girls, from female friends of mine, avoid like the plague. The male feminists, for they are not what they claim. Um, anyway, what have we got? Woman gives birth to twins with different dads after cheating on husband. I want to know how they worked that out. Okay, it's in China. Um Bit of fun. Okay, so this isn't actually the twins here. This is um, uh, just a stock image. Uh, so that's cool, I guess. <coughs> I presume. I don't know. Yeah, Getty images. Right, yeah, great. Um, a woman in China has given birth to two twins with different DNA. Uh, the mother has been forced to admit that she... How? How did you know this? When did... Right, okay, well. Um, the mother has been forced to admit that she cheated on her husband in a one-night stand after he grew suspicious that one of the boys didn't look like him. Okay. When DNA... T well, this is the thing, yeah, you've got this bloody stock image of two babies that look identical. When DNA tests came back, he raised questions with her, and she finally had to tell the truth, according to the uh, straight Herald. Well, I mean, good luck in, in... Well, well done, in a way, for at least having one of the twins be his. Because that'd be gutted to find out that neither of them were yours. Like, damn, you had two ch two shots. You think you'd, you know, law of averages, you'd get one of them, wouldn't you? Apparently not. Well, yes, you did. Uh, the story was revealed after the couple from South Eastern, uh, South Eastern uh, uh, <coughs> Zimang City had to register the birth of their two twin sons at the local police station earlier last year. In order to complete the registration, they had to produce uh, the results of a paternity test. Oh. Is that something you have to do in China? All right. Uh, the husband's... Uh, the husband, known only as a pseudonym, uh, Zai, Zai Long, had wondered why one of the sons didn't look like him. Upon receiving the DNA results, he was still shocked at the discovering that one of the boys did not have any biological relationship with him. According to the director at the Fujian um, Zhengtai Forensic Identification Center, the centre arranged for a paternity test for the couple. According to the director, he was furious after reading the DNA report and confronted his wife. Yeah, oh, there's more. It's reported that the wife initially denied the affair and accused her husband of falsifying results. That's nice. That's a good one. Yeah. Upon being confronted, uh, the wife admitted she had slept with another man in a one-night stand. The father said, I mean, how often does this happen? Is this like... Is this, a, uh, uh, according to experts, the exact odds of the phenomena are hard, are hard to calculate. The previous study suggests the chance could be between 1 and 400 and 1 in 13,000. Okay, you've got no fucking idea, basically. Uh, relatively rare, I think, is the... Um... God, that would be a difficult one to study, though, isn't it? It's like, uh, find people with twins. Okay, yep, you've got twins. Um, you've been fucking about. What do you mean? Well, when you got pregnant, were you, were you just you just a one, uh, you know, or, or a one man woman, or you know, you slinging it about a little bit? Uh, I'm married. I'm a one. Yeah, no, but come on, look, confidential. You are slinging it about a little bit. Okay, do the kids look the same. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much. They don't, do they? One of them's ginger. I don't like. It's one of them's, one of them's black. No, I don't. <laughs> look. Okay, right. We're doing DNA tests. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that is going to be a difficult one to study. I think you're also going to find it quite hard. Um, uh, to find willing participants for that study. Uh, right, let's get into some more of these sh 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 throws. This is uh, Joel, uh, Jolly Fur, Jolly Fur, Joel, uh, Jolly Fee, Jolly Fee. J O L L I double F E, Jolly Fur. Make out your own minds. Answers on a postcard, usual address. As 
we step into the path from a dark side Mind still covered in the scars from a past life Never wanted answers, never even asked why True cuts deep, these words are like sharp knives Search for change, try read it in your palm lines Or maybe try and see it in your star sign Time is a DS, it's watching seconds as they pass by In perfect sync with the last light Yeah, deep in the city ain't nobody sleeping Awake at all hours, living for the weekends No one can ever give us back the time that we spent Some minor regrets, but no time to repent That's time wasted, and see we never have the time to waste We are the ones struggling to try and find our way In a system we don't fit in or get why it's made The music lets our mind escape Big up to my boy Harry Roberts. Happy birthday, mate. Okay, it's a birthday for Mr. Harry Roberts. Okay. Love it when MCs would do birthday shout outs at raves. Shouting out birthdays in provincial towns. Oh, time my Burgess Hill crew, Wivelsfield crew, Hussock's crew. Eastbourne Ravers. Yeah. Deep in the city, ain't nobody sleeping Awake at all hours, living for the weekends No one can ever give us back the time that we spent Some minor regrets, but no time to repent That's time wasted, and see we never have the time to waste We are the ones struggling to try and find our way In a system we don't fit in or get why it's made The music lets our mind escape This is called How. Features linguistics. You know this linguistics? The step up, uh, called step up on uh, Mark, bless Mark. What's your preferences for MCs? Do you prefer them to uh, touch Mike, bless Mike, step up on the mic, uh, draw for the mic? reach for the mic, um, make sweet, sweet love in the moonlight to the mic, um, take the mic out for dinner, go to the pictures with the mic, um, ghost the mic, be DTF with the mic, um, insert the mic roughly into the rhinus, or um, just, I, I guess, just delicately use the mic for the uh, purpose um, it was built which is to, I guess, spit lyrical fire uh, up in a dance. Um, I quite like it when they bless Mike, I would say. 
I think he's been a good Mike and he deserves all the credit and all the blessings, all the thoughts and the prayers and all the love and well wishes in the world. Well done, Mike. Good boy. Anyway, uh, police called after a man spends hour in shop loo uh, says, I'm having a shit. I mean, for God's sake, can't you just let a man poo in peace? I mean, whatever you feel about men, a lot of them work quite hard and deserve uh, deserve a Todd in peace. And like, listen, like, so he's in a shop, yeah? Man spent so long locked inside a shop toilet, the staff felt forced to call the police. Really, is that the point that you called the police an hour? Is that it? Like, I feel for the guy. I've been there. I've had some moments where I've... I, look, to I think all men will agree with me. Our version of a safe space is is the car Uh I've I've often referred to it as my office, and I uh, you know that's where I do my thinking. Sit down, just you know, take in the world, get my thoughts together, you know, just organise my brain, and uh, just <coughs> I guess get my shit together, and just to have a little. Just occasionally. I'm not going to spend an hour in the bog every day. I'm not going to go into, I don't know, H&M, ask to use their toilet, and then spend an hour in there every single day. But sometimes, sometimes, depending on what I've been going through that day, maybe I'll need to spend an hour in the shitter, all right? And to get up and basically immediately fall over because my legs have gone numb from resting on them playing Angry Birds or something on my smartphone. Do people even play games on their phones anymore? I mean, they just scroll social media. I mean, I've, I haven't played a game on my phone since, I don't know, 1998, uh, just through social media scrolling. I don't know. Anyway, let's find out what's going on there. Officers were told the man had locked himself in a cubicle and repeatedly told staff who asked him how to come out says, fuck off, I'm having a shit, which I think is a perfectly reasonable response. To make matters worse, he wasn't even a paying customer. How do you know that he wasn't going to buy something after the shit? If you go into a shop absolutely gagging to, to drop, yeah, to drop your business, like you're not going to go, oh yeah, well I've got, actually I've got to go pick up a couple of uh, plain white t-shirts and some uh, some socks, and I'm going to try on a new new pair of slacks. Uh, they've got a new ultra skinny section here now at the at the the Hennies, and do people still call it Hennies. I don't know, maybe it was just emos in Brighton. And <laughs> you go go for a shit first so you can think about your shopping clearly. You can't, sh- you can't shop clearly knowing that you're about to drop an absolute bowl buster. So you drop your bowl buster first. Bowl busting visions! And then... Um, and then go and do your shop. So I imagine, like, you're not, like, if you've spent an hour busting bowls, yeah, and they've called the pigs on you, yeah, they've called the filth because they think you're staging a dirty protest in there. Um, it, uh, you're not going to want to go around and do your shop after that, are you? So no wonder he didn't buy anything after he came out. Police say the man allegedly... <coughs> Police say the man allegedly entered the shop uh, about an hour before police arrived and officers moved him on. Right, Great Manchester Police shared the story on Twitter. Oh, what a surprise. Um, The man did eventually move on and no criminal offences were committed. No, you're damn right. Taking a Todd in a public toilet is not a criminal offence. If they start criminalising that, if the authoritarian fascist bully boys start criminalising having a Todd, and you know they might, I consider taking a Todd in a in an H. I don't even know what shop this was, but I'm just assuming it's H and M. If like taking a Todd in an H and M toilet is my right to freedom of expression, and if we're shutting that down now, then what kind of authoritarian Orwellian dystopian nightmare are we living in when just a gentleman can't Todd in peace? A bizarre revelation, predictably, predictably prompted a stream of toilet-related jokes online. Anyway, the GMP City Centre, Greater Manchester Police City Centre Twitter account, verified, blue tick. Report yesterday of a male barricading himself in a toilet. He didn't barricade himself in there, he just locked it while he was having a Todd. What, you want him to leave the door open? Let the stank out? <laughs> it is alleged he had entered one hour previously. It was not a customer, yet. Not a cu- you know, innocent until proven guilty. It was not. There's no... Bloody, 
There's no due process in this, is there? He's in there dropping his due process and you won't let him have it. Uh, when asked to leave by staff, he told them to fuck off from having shit. Officers attended and moved the man on. No criminal offence committed. Great. Inspector M. Okay. Glenn Matthews, one. I hope it was logged. Um, <coughs> Matt Tucky. Sounds like there were blockages in a number of contexts. Terrible. Not funny at all. Uh, I heartily agree that a man needs some peace and quiet whilst having a shit. Russian can cause problems in later life, I imagine. Yeah, Tony Marshall, he knows what's up. Plenty of people with time to kill were answering nature's calls. Uh, with time to kill while answering nature's calls, enjoy flicking through their phones to check their news feeds or play Candy Crush. But scientists say scrolling on the toilet can expose you and others around you to illnesses, including germs like Salmonella, E. coli, and C. difficile. A certain degree of skill and attention is needed to not touch your device with your wiping hand. Uh, and even then. Just having your phone on the side leaves it exposed to harmful bacteria. Well, that's probably what made me ill. Good stuff. Um, listen, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm going to play another bit. What have we got? Oh, let's play this Robbie T. Okay, seems like seems like a reasonable thing to do right now. Not sure what label this is on. It's called Anima. The track is called Anima by Robbie T. That's one word. If you're listening on YouTube, smash that like button. If you're listening on Facebook, smash the like button and the share button. I love you long time. reminder at seven o'clock tonight UK time Mr. Merck and the squad bring their Eastern Front show live from Estonia the finest commie rhythms they can drum up I apologise, they're not communists. A good old fat cat capitalist, just like me.
is Anima by Robbie T. It's a weird one, but I like it. Bad boy Brendan Blunt in the Facebook, leading the charge. Waving a big old lobster flag. All right, let's do this synthetic booze one then. Synthetic booze to get you drunk without hangovers, ready in five years. Jeff Parsons with 40 shares on this one. So you know this is going to be a riot. Uh, Hangovers could be a thing of the past within the next half decade, according to scientists who have created a form of synthetic booze known as uh, Alcosynth. Nice. It promises all the benefits of booze. Lovely, lovely, tasty, delicious booze. Uh, Without the debilitating drawback the next morning. Uh, After years of research, it's finally getting to the point where it can be sold to bars and clubs. Branded as... uh, Alcarella. Alcarella. It will give you the warm, fuzzy feeling of regular booze fluids without any of the side effects, namely hangovers and a slow, painful destruction of your liver. All right, well, it's going to have some sort of side effect. Uh, it makes you green. It's the work of Professor David Nutt. Well, how about that? Uh, Professor David Nutt, who doesn't reply to my tweets when I try and get him on the podcast, but yeah, it's just he's just part of a long list of people. Uh, across the spectrum of humans uh, that don't reply to my uh, tweets and will now never because I closed my Twitter account. Um, it's the work of Professor David Nutt, a former government advisor who invented the Alcosynth molecule to target specific receptors in the brain and ignore others. Look, there he is. He looks like a cheery boy. Why, is, why would he not want to come on my podcast? He's the guy who got, basically, he is known as the... Um, uh, the scientist that got fired or something that they call him. Anyway, he, he made a study that said basically that doing dingers is safer than going horse riding. And statistically it is uh, that more people are killed and injured horse riding than taking dingers every year. And that's even if you uh, make it. So basically for every like pill you take versus every time you go horse riding you're more likely to get killed or injured doing the horse riding i think i mean i'm not i don't think he was suggesting that people who ride horses should actually just do pingers instead i don't think that was his suggestion but maybe you know safer anyway got fired for it because apparently the government won't too keen on that (laughs) (coughs) and we know where the brain Alcohol has its good effects and bad effects, and what particular receptors mediate that? GABA, uh, glutamate, and other ones, such as serotonin and dopamine, he explained to The Guardian. The effects of alcohol are complicated, but you can target the parts of the brain you want to target. The drink is in its final stages of development, but it will still need to be approved by regulators before before you can start quaffing it down at your local. There There will obviously be testing to check the molecule is safe, and we need to show that it's different from alcohol. Uh, we will demonstrate that it doesn't produce toxicity like alcohol does. Yeah, so this is a thing about hangovers. A lot of people, well, the, the thought was that it's all dehydration uh, that causes the ha- hangover. And uh, it does to an extent. Um, however, uh, the thought is now that actually when the body breaks down the alcohol molecule, it produces a toxin within the, within the body. And it's that toxin uh, that makes you feel rough. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that's a hundred percent again, nothing in science is a hundred percent. Um, once all the regulations have been passed, the plan, uh, from the professor is to sell, um, Alcarella. That's a terrible name, uh, to the alcohol industry, uh, which will then start putting it in drinks. Uh, Nutt and his colleagues are currently seeking 20 mil, funding to bring it to market cool i'll chip in a fiver uh first round's on me uh in the uk alcohol related liver deaths have been on the rise and more than one in ten deaths 
of people over 40 is now from liver disease. Jesus. <sighs> Didn't realise it was that bad. That's not good. Uh, Philip McEnroe in the comments says, forget that, what we need is, alco- uh, is calorie-free alcohol. Well, just drink whiskey and, and, and uh, soda. There's hardly any calories in that. I mean, just, just eat less. Oh, I don't know. Don't take my advice about anything. I don't know anything. I'm just, just a man in a room doing his best. Government stutters over porn ban uh, for UK computers and phones. Uh, okay, Parsons, no shares on this. Obviously, no one cares. Uh, government put plans uh, to introduce age checks on porn websites, and it appears to have been pushed back. Adult websites were expected. There's, right, there's actually a real poverty of information in this article. Um, basically, the upshot of it is they've put it back a bit. Don't know how long. Uh, don't really know why they're faffing about, but they're faffing about. Basically, I would imagine due to an utter, utter lack of competence uh, within the UK government is what I would imagine is the issue there. Just a complete lack of ability to do anything right ever. Oh, I mean, obviously, they can do, do do some stuff, right? I'm being hyperbolic. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being ridiculous for comedic effect. You know, like the people do on the internet. You know, like the late night talk show hosts, the comedians, you know, the jolly makers, the, the, the laughing folk, the, the banter pushers. You know the types. Loud as motorbikes, not, not interested in even remotely busting a grape in a fruit fight. <coughs> Yeah, there's some statistics at the bottom about how most people don't know about it, but we already covered that on bloody Tom Woods' thing in the Lab Bible hey, last week. It's over it. Okay, so it's, it's probably still coming in, but they don't really know. Um, so, yeah, thanks for that, Metro. Brilliant. Great stuff. Okay, uh, woman arrested for twerking on cops. Uh, what, in the, in the House of Commons? Okay, this is probably due a refresh, isn't it? Because there is a video. Here she goes. Go on, love. Oh, it's a big girl. She's got her shopping. She's not keen. She's sort of lording it about a little bit. She's shit-faced. She's got Uggs or something. Oh, she's dancing a little bit, swinging the hips around. The policeman's not impressed. Oh, she's fallen. She's tried to twerk. She's fallen. That can't be really considered a twerk. She w- she wants to be arrested. Yeah. Arrest me with your cop. <laughs> oh, she's down. Oh, she's hit the deck. Oh, yes, baby. Arrest me with your cock. Ah, she's getting it. Well, she she's she is game, wasn't she? She's keen for it. Um, nanny saves baby seconds before something collapses. This is probably worth looking at as well, isn't it? There's a nanny. She's just yumping about. Uh, she's uh, there's a baby in a cot in the middle of the room. Uh, looks like a sort of upmarket house. Uh, quite uh, quite a lot of clutter. Oh, she's running in. She's grabbed the baby, uh, and. Well, nothing. She's grabbed the baby, run out of the room. Um, what's what's the shtick here? Oh my god, the roof's collapsed. I reckon the baby would have survived that. Uh, that is good work, though. Good timing. Well done. Uh, Nanny should get a raise for that. Nanny should get, um, I don't know, a nice carriage clock or something. A sort of uh, c- a commemorative carriage clock or something useful like that. Like not, Maybe not extra cash. You know, something... It's worth quite a lot of money, but it's actually fundamentally useless. All right. Is someone ringing 999 to complain about Morrison. Right, look, let's come on. We've gone, gone down a, a, a rabbit hole there. Um, uh, these Scottish insults have been officially added to the dictionary. Well, thank God for that. It's a well-known fact that Scottish people have the best insults. Is it? Okay. Um, which is why... It's about time that some of them have been added to the Oxford English Dictionary. Some of the words include boar bag, uh, which to anyone, in Scot- uh, anyone who's not Scottish translates to scrotum, as well as bam, bam pot, bam stick, uh, which basically are just ways of describing someone who's annoying or a bit of a dick. Okay, barb. Uh, the next one, these are all the bees here. 
I mean, is there how many are there? You're the, do they all just begin with B? Uh, barb is a barbiturate. Okay, boar bag, scrotum, uh, bilach, uh, a narrow mountain pass. Is that an, how's that an insult? Uh, beaten up uh, of an egg, liquid ingredients, stirred or whisked vigorously. What's going on here? There's, none of this makes any sense. Bide in. Biddy in. Biddy in. A person who lives with his or her partner in a non-marital relationship. A cohabiting partner. Biddy in. Big Z. Having, having an exaggerated sense of one's own importance. Arrogant, pretentious, conceited. Other words include roaster, tube and sprag. Uh, although all of them are just different ways of saying the same thing. You're saying what? As the Urban Dictionary sums up nicely, uh, they're generally used to describe someone who is making a complete cunt of themselves. Right. Um, also, now officially a word, is uh, Ouija, which is, means someone from Glasgow. Outside of the uh, fascinating world of Scottish slang, other words newly included are chuff. Uh, yeah. Um, that's been around for a very, very long time, though. Tighter than a gnat's chuff was uh, a saying that I remember from school, which the dictionary says is female pubic hair or female genitals. And also, dirty bar, uh, which you can probably figure out, is a dirty bar. The word sprunt uh, is now in there, which means to date. Uh, and the word barb, which is short for barbiturate, possibly due to the rise of the use of medications like Valium and Xanax. There have also been about 650 words and phrases added, added, many of which are indicative of language becoming more inclusive, which can't be a bad thing. The word misgender is used to describe the action of addressing someone by the wrong pronoun, uh, such as he or she, uh, important in these enlightened times, and also the addiction, uh, addition of zer and here and people kind. Oh my God, people kind. Seriously. Oh my God, that's a Trudeauism. Grow up. Um, uh, there's also been words added for new weird types. I mean, like seriously, that's an inherently sexist word. Like because you've deliberately removed the word man, even though the word mankind is not obviously refers to all humans. <sighs> People kind. Do me a favour. There are also words that have been added uh, for new weird types of dog, uh, which have come as a result of crossbreeding. Uh, Multipoo is a new one, is a mix between a Maltese terrier and a miniature toy poodle. Puggle, cross between a pug and a beagle. Doggy. Cross between a dachshund and a corgi. I bet they're a fucking laugh, right? That's my kind of dog. I like them long. I like them nice. I like them long. And I like them low. I like a low rider of a dog. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the most expected phrases to be... Uh, what? One of the most unexpected phrases to be added, though, is the verb to get off at Edge Hill. Well, as the dictionary points out, you can replace Edge Hill with Gateshead, Red Fern, and other regional verifications. Destination isn't the important thing. As the OED's Jonathan Dent explained, the jokey linguistic meme uses the idea of disembarking, a sexually suggested getting off at the last stop before the terminus of the railway line. What does this mean? Oh, okay. The appropriately um, precipitous sounding Edge Hill is the penultimate station on the only line into Liverpool Lime Street. There are multiple local variations in British and English getting off at Gateshead rather than Newcastle, Haymarket rather than Edinburgh, uh, and so on. To simply put, it means to pull out. Right, okay. <laughs> to get what, the last station before, before it stops. Embellished in a fancier terms, embellished in fancier terms by the OED as to engage in coitus interruptus, to withdraw the penis from the vagina before ejaculation. <laughs> okay, so he's getting off at Preston Park. Nice. <laughs> Uh, I should probably point out here that this isn't an effective method of contraception. It's the best. Still the best, still the greatest. Just pull out. Just be a pull out guy. No, it's not an effective method of contraception. An impressive uh, bit of word pain nonetheless. Listen, guys, it's the end of the show now. Uh, there's five minutes left. I'm going to shout out the VIP list, play a jam, and then we're playing a repeat of the Combine show. Uh, there is uh, swearing throughout. Put that out there, but there are also shoe throwers throughout. 
So it sounds maybe a little bit like this show. Um, more sh uh, more shoe throwers. You know, less swearing. I don't know. I, I, look, I don't have a swearometer. Listen, guys, just I'm doing my best, okay? I'm doing my goddamn best. Where's the VIP list? Come on. I know you're lurking there somewhere. Do, do, do. <coughs> Listen, I want to do Rankin's Records later, but I'd, I'd, um, I'd, I might have to go back to the doctors. I've, I've, I had a chest x-ray. I want to know what's going on with it. They haven't told me yet, so I might just bust in there like the bloody Kool-Aid man, demanding to know what's going on. Show me my x-rays. Oh, yeah. Anyway, look, thank you to everyone who's supporting on Patreon. Um, I Yes, I'm going to go ahead with the idea of giving everyone that supports on Patreon... Uh, five quid's worth of store credit every month, starting next month, uh, which is what, beginning of next week. So that over time, build up money to buy merch, which I think is a cool thing to do. Um, so if you want to support the show, if you want to support the station, if you want to help me continue to do this every morning and to build Threshold into a bigger and better platform with amazing content, help me produce more content myself, help me help other people to produce content, to find other people to bring onto the station, to find new and interesting shows, new and interesting people, new and interesting music. Uh, if you want to help me to do that, then one of the ways you can support is by joining our Patreon uh, page. You will go on there and you can join up in different ways. Um, but most people will join the, I think it's called the Horns Crew, where it's $10 a month. And for that, you get your name on the VIP list shouted out at the end of every show. You'll get your name in the new version of the app on the founders list. You'll get five quids of store credit every month from next week. Uh, you will also get to join the VIP lounge in the Discord and become part of the Green Gang. It's where all the real shit goes down. And you will get, a, well, I will be eternally grateful and you will get to help support the station and to grow it into a bigger, badder beast of of a station join the ranks of Oliver Hooper Nicholas Gonclaus Tom Ryan Reese Mosson Squidgy Beats Parsons Paulie Hutton Kieran R Michael Kozierski Matthew Tompkins Dave Long Joel Potter Cole Murphy uh, Paulie Hutton is still looking for people to do a lobster meet up for a thing called Roller in Perth so uh, get in touch with him in the Lobster Crew Facebook group if you're interested in that uh, Dave Long Joel Potter Cole Murphy Sam Howard Tony J Richard Patterson Jack Murphy Tom Cam Stephen Harris Matthew Bullard Zara Pickle Jerome Van Thunderbutt Mike Pye <coughs> Anthony Walker uh, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heischelbeck, John Phillison, BDR Crew, Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief Cooper, Kennedy Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Scrivington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shobby, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Eltham, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive, Sorry, Trans, uh, Nicholas Lawsey, Damon Rayner, Chris Brakes, The Build, uh, Carissa Barthelson, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D, Daniel Genvey, Flaxis, uh, Alexander Cassidy, Matt Wright, and Dylan Laws. Thank you all so much for supporting the station. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. And listen, I'm enormously grateful for everyone that listens and interacts and, you know, chats to me in the Discord, in the Facebook group and all of these things. For everyone that sent me messages, tell me how much they're enjoying it. Look, I, without you lot, I wouldn't be doing it because, well, you know, I nearly left music altogether and without finding threshold to do and realised that people enjoyed it and people were getting value out of it, uh, I, I, I'd, have, I'd have left, left music basically. Uh, so I'm just eternally grateful that you guys allow me the opportunity to do it. I'm enormously grateful. Right, thank you all. I will see you tomorrow. Hang around on threshold.fm to listen to the repeat of the Combine show. Combine radio, the good boys. Uh, so two hours of shoe throwers. Let's do this shit. All right, I love you. Goodbye. <laughs>